I have been an artist all my life, but at the age of 15, I made an amazing discovery. I discovered this technique while drawing late into the hours of the night. I felt as if I was already half asleep, and my eyes began to close as I was drawing. When I realized I was falling asleep, my eyes opened suddenly, and I had discovered that I was drawing without even being aware or trying to direct what I was doing. At this point, I realized that the music I was listening to was actually influencing my hand. It felt as though it was gently being pulled by a magnet. Hi, I'm Annabelle Cohen. I teach at the University of Prince Edward Island in the field of music cognition, music psychology. So this has been uh, very interesting to speak to Kurt and see the videos and the testimonials of the artists who have have uh, experienced the music and drawn. Does this technique really work? You're about to find out. I've asked six people from different lifestyles if they wanted to participate in a drawing experiment. Hi, my name is Jay Knowles and I'm a contractor. I'm here to learn something new. Um, I have very little art experience uh, other than a real interest in, in increasing my creativity here. Um, I have a background mainly in contracting, so I'm, I'm a left brain kind of a guy most of the time. Uh, and I, I think this is going to be a really great chance for me to, to broaden my, uh, my uh, experience and my creativity. So I'm going to give it a start. Hi, I'm Rhonda. I'm from Somerset, PBI. I'm a massage therapist and an energy healer. I'm uh, doing work with crystals, and I'm really excited to be doing this uh, artwork listening to Kurt's music, and as it inspires the creativity, and I just can't wait to see what it looks like on paper. I'm Irene Nobchek from Bredalbin, in the middle of PEI, in the country. I'm a marine biologist, so uh, not an artist at all. I haven't really picked up a pen or a brush since I was a teenager. Hi, I'm Carl. Um, I am a, an artist. I've been practicing for uh, 30 years. Uh, essentially, I'm a potter. Um, I'm a master potter. Uh, my nickname is People's Potter. In 96, I uh, studied welding, and so now I'm a sculptor. Um, I'm really looking forward to this process too. I happened to run into somebody that uh, uh, asked me to show up today, so I showed up. I'm uh, dying to use the pencils, hear the music, and uh, yeah, looking forward to the process. And that's the end. Over the years, I've created a significant body of artwork. These are a few examples. What I hope this experiment will tell us is that it doesn't matter what background or profession you have, anybody can draw using this technique. One of the most important rules to remember is that you must avoid using your imagination. We will hear the rest of the introductions a bit later, so for now, Let's just jump right into the instruction. For a moment, close your eyes and clear your mind. Take a few deep breaths, like the sound of ocean waves flowing in and out. You must realize that you are capable of drawing anything. You have no limits. You are a master of the arts. That may sound funny to you, but accept this thinking as I do, and it will take you deeper into your artistic side.
Now open your eyes. With the drawing tool of your choice, place your hand in the center of your drawing surface. During this process, it's important to remember not to use your imagination. You may begin to feel a slight pulling sensation with the lightness of the music. Follow in the direction and pressure your hand may want to respond. For instance, if the music is playing soft, you might draw softly and apply more pressure as the volume increases. Another example is that you may feel the sensation pulling your hand to move as fast as the music is playing, just as you may feel the desire to move and pace with the rhythm of music while dancing. Keep in mind that whatever you create is part of the process and not to worry about the outcome, no matter how strange or unrecognizable it may appear. Using repetitious instrumental music or sound may at first take a person over a few hours to create a significant visual pattern. The patterns and shapes that you newly discovered while working with this process can be added to any project in the future that you wish to create. You might also think of this as if you're building a library of different shapes and styles. Some of the shapes that you might create may resemble people, or plants, trees, or even landscape. The best audio source to use with this technique is high resonant repetitive sound or music. The brain distinguishes the individual tones or frequencies in resonant audio better than muffled bass-like sounds. Music with heavy environmental sound effects such as reverb, distortion, or excessive echo will make it harder to translate to an image. One of the rules of this experiment is that neither of the students are allowed to look at each other's work as they are creating it. Using repetitious instrumental music or sound, may at first take a person over a few hours to create a significant visual pattern. The more you let go and just draw rather than judge, the more you will feel where the music wants to take you. Listening to a music pattern for the first time, your brain is creating the neural pattern at the same time. I have recently learned that I'm not alone in my discovery, as Annabelle Cohen is about to explain. Um, it reminded me very much of um, some work carried out by a group of people called the Gestalt psychologists in quite a few decades ago in the 1930s, uh, 40s. Um, gestalt means structure or whole and what uh, Kurt is exploring here, what the artists are exploring is a similarity in the structure of music and the visual patterns to some extent. And this is something that this group of men, their names were Kohler, Kafka, and Wertheimer, uh, were also focusing on as part of 
what they felt was important to psychology. And so, uh, unfortunately, they could not study this very well because that was before the time where we had recorded music. And so now Kurt is directing our attention to this with recordings. And, uh, and there does seem to be something well worth uh, study in, in psychology. I, I think it, the, this has been to some extent ignored, although there are psychologists who have focused on a phenomenon called synesthesia, where the same um, experience, aesthetic experience, is uh, represented in various modalities, be it visual, auditory, it even be smell or touch. It seems everyone agrees that music is a driving force in their profession and daily lives. It could provide you with your inspiration or help you to relax and achieve a very deep meditative state. Not only is it enjoyable, but I also believe it could be a type of software for the mind, providing us with directions and rules for a specific outcome. Many have asked me, Will this technique work with color? Well, I'll tell you this. You could apply music to painting as well, although you might find it difficult at first because color offers you more dimensions of perception. Color is also applied at a slower pace, and therefore you might become out of sync with the music. It still might be okay to paint, because if you listen to repetitive music, you're always reinforced with the same pattern, the same concept, the same feeling. Your hand will continue to be guided to allow you to finish off what areas you have not yet already completed. Color is a big topic in itself, and I hope I can share my insights with you in the future. The style of music that you listen to greatly enhance the type of theme that you want to create for any architectural design. When using music, there is no limit to what you can create. The variations of music itself are infinite. You might find that some music helps you to draw some things better than others. For instance, a particular style of music might help you to draw a person easier while if you use that same music on trying to draw a landscape, you might find it to be a little bit difficult. Everyone learns at their own pace to whatever feels comfortable. At any time, if you'd like, you can jump in and try drawing using this technique. Just try and concentrate on the music itself and listen beyond my voice whenever I speak. Remember, what you're looking for with your hand is that slight pulling sensation, as if being pulled by a magnet. If you're not too sure how to start, just draw a circle in the center of the page about the size of your thumbnail. Keep drawing the circle until your hand wants to draw beyond it. Typically, the faster the music plays, the faster you will draw. When I draw, you will always find my hand searching. If I have lost the position where my hand is supposed to be, 
in sync with the music. Drawing for me is fairly addictive because I find there's always something new and amazing to discover. I've realized that if I had an instructor to teach me this process at the time I discovered it in 1990, who knows how much time, money, and supplies it might have saved. Because I threw out a lot of my artwork, because at the time, I didn't fully trust the process. Just for clarity and perspective, the students here are not drawing in sync with the music as you hear it now. Because the music has repeated so many times, you may gain the foresight to know what to draw next. This is very similar to knowing the verse in a song that you're very familiar with. You remember the words and know when it's time to be said. Using headphones is a good way to isolate the music and to avoid distractions. I mainly use headphones for drawing because the sound in your workspace or your surrounding environment can interfere and drown out the additional sounds from your speakers. I provided the students with only two music samples. After the first music, entitled We Are The Same, had repeated for approximately 30 minutes, the music was replaced with the second tune, entitled Spirit Flight, the music that you are currently listening to now. The students at this point replaced their paper and began to draw for the same amount of time. While listening to this new music, the students' perceptions changed. They were no longer drawing the same shapes, like spirals and figure eights. I'll continue to discuss these very interesting similarities a bit later. These musical patterns are stored inside you as neural networks, which is necessary for memory. 
You may, throughout your day, remember a catchy tune and begin to hum or sing it. really happy the way things turned out. This was the student's first time using this technique. The future of this artistic development program is unknown, but I hope that schools will one day use it to help accelerate students to go beyond barriers of doubt and to realize that they have a new way to access their potential. My name is Kate Poole, and I've been involved with many different modalities of art over the years. I've uh, done woodwork and glasswork and painting and some sandstone sculpture, and uh, I've done some amount of drawing in the past, but uh, this has been a new experience, drawing to music. I've done different things with music in my life, like I do drumming and singing. But to actually draw with music is a new experience, and uh, I think it's something that I will try again in the future. Um, I've had experiences where um, sound has made my body move spontaneously, like with dance. And I remember uh, a time when I was out in Saskatchewan at a Buddhist seminar, and I was just beginning to learn about Buddhism, and I was doing a mantra, Om Mani Padme Hum, and I was kind of drifting off to sleep at the time laying in my bunk and then all of a sudden my arm starts to do this mudra dance without me having any control over it. I had a strong, powerful sense of, of, uh, of uh, focusing just on the artwork and letting go of the linear time. Um, time felt like it, it, it stood still and uh, it was really enjoyable. I didn't want to leave. I thought it was a, a really amazing experience. It wasn't like I expected it to be. It just it just wanted to go on and on and on. And at one point, I kind of thought, no, this is this is way too much fun. I need to be a serious, accelerated artist. <laughs> so I tried to kind of move the pencil, and then it was like, no, that's not what it's all about. Just let go and be free with the music. And to see everyone else's too is just incredible how we all interpreted it our own way and came up with the same shapes. Like I was I was blown away when I saw the other the other work. And it just it really it shows what amazing creative potential we have if we just abandon control and uh, just go for it. Yeah. I really look forward to um, to exploring it more. The shapes that I was drawing, to me, probably didn't make a whole lot of sense, but uh, it was very enjoyable to do because there was no kind of internal criticism on this, uh, which I'd felt before, you know, doing realistic type drawings. Uh, but that's all gone. That that's just not there. And the music was really interesting to me uh, it, because it it really helped me focus on allowing this uh, this drawing to proceed it, it, um, it, it, it just it just helped me flow through the whole process uh, and, um, uh, that was really really quite enjoyable the whole process was very enjoyable 
and uh, and I want to do it again. What were you, your thoughts and feelings um, running through your mind uh, during your experience? Did you feel any pulling sensation with the uh, listening to the music? Well, there were no thoughts. There was lots of feelings. Um, oh yeah, the music just activated the arm. When the music came on, I had no deep thoughts in my in my head that I was dealing with other than uh, hmm, I wonder I wonder uh, what I'm supposed to draw, but that went that just went right away really fast, and I remember just putting my pencil to the paper and, uh, and getting right into it and really enjoying focusing uh, on on allowing the music to go through me and just. Whatever came out on the paper came out, and uh, that was actually very freeing for me. And felt really good to know that I wasn't trying to draw something. Uh, I was just trying to trying to just release uh, any control uh, that I had, uh, which for me was great. So this was fun. I I don't often you know get to play with uh, art art uh, materials anymore. I don't have any small children around the house or anything. Um, working with the music was was uh, was great. It was very liberating. Um, keeping your mind just empty. Well, sometimes things crept in. I mean, I noticed at one point that a, an eagle feather that I'd been handling before we started seemed to be emerging out of the, out of the patterns that yeah, I think what Kurt was trying to get us to do in this process was to get us to have that same sort of free movement without the intellect being involved, just letting the sound and the music move through your body in a very direct way. So when I was doing the artwork, there was definitely times where you felt like your hand was just moving to the sound and, and you weren't thinking about what you were doing, and then at other times maybe you would think about, oh, I think I would like a heavier line there or something like that. And you would focus on that for a while. And so it was, I guess, sort of a back and forth play in this experience. Whereas maybe um, if a person was to do it o over a longer period of time, you could get more relaxed and forget about the environment and really forget about what you're doing and go into a more non-doing, just being, in the moment being in the sound flow but yeah there were times where i got a hint of the possibilities of, of this process and it's pretty exciting you know my first drawing had lots of circles and lots of kind of curves to it um that was kind of the music that was coming through i think and, and it showed that on the paper and then as that wound down uh the next piece of music was, was different and I picked up a new piece of paper, put it right up there, and started drawing. And uh, it was it was uh, different altogether. I I felt as I started into it, like I I didn't want to cross lines, and it was a really strong feeling of of not crossing another line. And I would pick up my pencils, I remember, and just go to another one and, and draw another shape, and then pick it up again, ever so slightly, and go to another one. And uh, I could say I felt strongly drawn to do that. Um, it, it was not so much a conscious thing. It felt like that's what I needed to be doing. It was really fun when I was using the two pencils. Because sometimes the two pencils worked in tandem, and other times the two pencils could work, you know, separate, individual. Mm -hmm. Exciting experience. Exhausting. I'm tired. I'm gonna go have a coffee after this. <laughs> no, it is. It's very exhausting. The music was wonderful. It was. Uh, I don't know. It was good. There were a lot of different levels to it. Did you find the experience easy? Yeah, I found it. After a while, I I uh, felt the urge to draw these little small angular figures off on one side of the paper 
that at some point uh, then I was done with that and went on to something else. You can see how given the freedom to, to just um, move uh, with the pencil and with the music that, that you could discover ways of creating things and, and making certain kinds of impressions, you know, in retrospect. You'd say, oh, uh, how did I do that? I'd like to be able to do that again. Or something. It's neat. Hi, my name is Teresa Doyle and I'm a musician by trade. This has been an interesting afternoon for me. Um, I'm not used to having a pencil in my hand. Um, I, I found myself being, being pulled by the music and I guess the most interesting thing for me was the compulsion to use two pencils at the same time and work on a kind of mirror image thing and I think that's something I might, might try to do again the next time that I can carve out a little time to do some visual work. Um, some of the music felt very uh, geometric to me and um, at other times, you know, almost like black holes and spirals. So yeah, it's an interesting concept and something that I think uh, if one had the opportunity to do it uh, quite often then you could really get into that groove of allowing the, the, the pencil and paper to, to really um, melt the music. Thanks a lot. Ultimately, I do see, see similarities. And we all have these wonderful squirrely days. Looking at Jay's piece now, uh, what's remarkable about Jay's piece, my piece, is uh, I did a little bit of a sort of electronic schematic drawing up in the corner here and on Jay's piece he has the same sort of thing. Uh, you know, of course there's slight differences. I used arrows, he used dots, but I have dots in mine. Um, it's interesting, now that I'm looking at all three together, the other thing that Rhonda and I have in common is a lot of our work is actually we didn't let the pencil leave the paper whereas Jay did little sections and composed them all into one. Uh, I do see elements of that in my work. You see the shading in between uh, you know in between forms in between lines but uh, yeah it was an interesting process. I enjoyed it a great deal. It was interesting to see what, what came out under the influence of the different styles of music. I mean, they, they, the two pieces are very different um, and uh, they do reflect um, the, the, the music quite well, I think. Um, that first piece of music was, as Teresa said, pretty cosmic. It was, and, and it looks like that when you, when you look at that at piece. Um, although at the time, um, I, I had feelings of, of tunneling down in, into paper and those, there's a whole lot of spiraling down, down into, into the paper happening here. Uh, I had a chance to look at uh, well, my, my work, Rhonda's work, Jay's work, I'm looking at Rhonda's work. What strikes me about Rhonda's work is it, there is a difference between Jay's and mine. Jay's mind tend to be more technical. Rhonda's is, oh, far more organic. It's interesting that we all sort of ended up doing these spiral things and the little tight spiral things. Uh, in all our work, so there's the similarity. Not only did everyone draw spirals, but after reviewing the video we saw that Carl and Rhonda specifically drew figure eights, and more precisely, they drew them in the center of the page. The, you know, the line, the flow of the lines too, I've seen all the work. But her work, yeah, I mean, there's obviously, yeah, I like that. Both Kate and Rhonda also drew spirals from the top of the page, spiraling down to the left side. The second one was neat. Uh, 
it was much more agitated, a much more agitated piece. It felt to me like rain, but it didn't come out looking like rain at all. <laughs> And another aspect of this has to do with the recent discoveries and great research effort in music cognition and music psychology, where it is known now that the appreciation of music is the appreciation of pattern and the ability of the mind to predict what the next note will be. So when somebody is listening to music and appreciating it in any way, they are processing a pattern and that pattern is being represented in their mind. Now, artistic productivity is a function of the mind. So, speaking with Kurt, he believes the same thing as, as I'm going to say here, um, that whatever you put into the mind, if there are patterns in the mind, uh, those that, that come in via music, well, they could well influence what goes out in the visual domain or in the motor domain. Music is very much connected with the motor system as well. The timing of music, the temporal pattern can control the motor system, your legs, your arms, your vocal system in singing and so on. So there again, it could control uh, and pull the, um, uh, your arm movements in drawing and it could inspire um, the visual um, ideas that you want to create. Well, a final comment is that recent brain imaging in music has revealed that many, many parts of the brain, if not all parts of the brain, are activated by music. So this uh, presentation of music during the act of drawing could um, elicit activity that would not normally be there when you're drawing. So it could create new sources of ideas or new motor programs or new patterns. Music is very rich in activating the brain. There's a tremendous amount of scope here for research. This, this was a very enjoyable process for me. And I want to thank Kurt for putting this together. For sure, I can, I can feel much more confident in my creativity and, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking to see what I can do next with this. Thanks. If you're still wondering if this technique really works, consider this. If you drew something while using this technique, and you know you didn't copy it, and you know you didn't use your imagination, then I'm happy to announce that it worked. You can't create something from nothing. So if you didn't copy it, and you know you didn't imagine it, then from somewhere you must have heard it.